Mental. Welcome back, degenerates. Today is time for part two of the stencil video, and we're going to go through all the comments that you guys written under the post and under the video. Thank you so much for everybody that shared all your findings and tips and tricks with us. I certainly learned a lot and hopefully you guys will as well. I'm going to answer all the questions that I can answer first and then we're going to check all the tips and tricks you guys proposed. Art of Amando says, Seven years in, love this trade and I'm so blessed to be part of it. Hand stenciled for six of them. Back on hand stencils again. My personal opinion, a hand stencil is nice, but when you're doing something super intricate or technical and you mess up your stencil in the process, somehow it can really put a damper on the day. The accuracy of a hand printed stencil is also unmatchable in my opinion and the peace of mind you can have going into a big session kind of does make it worth having. Focusing that time and energy on to the tattoo and client can make for a much better client experience. It's kind of a magic trick. First time I used one was after five years of tattooing and I was blown away. Yeah. Well, first time I've used one was after 11 years and I was so impressed. I had to make a video about it and share it. Yeah, no, I'm with you. It makes for a much better client experience and that also ties in well to what Regrets Zero said. Laughing my ass off, bro is late as fuck to the game. My co-workers did the same thing, having the client sitting there like an idiot for hours while he stenciled. Apprentices and new artists should definitely hand stencil to understand where the detail should be, warming up the hand, etc. I tend to agree. Apprentices and new artists should most certainly hand stencil and perhaps digital hand stencil. Just the same process, but digitally, so you have a bit more precision. Bro is late as fuck to the game. Yeah, I'm late as fuck to the game, and also my clients had to sit there like an idiot and listening to my right wing propaganda whilst I'm stenciling. <laughs> Having the clients sit there like an idiot for hours. I, I just find that funny, but that is um, reality. That That's what I was doing, really. When's that? Fucking hell, bro, this dog. Adam Darklord, of course, fellow YouTuber, go check him out. I use a mix of hand stenciling in Procreate and using the Ghost Line app for hair or fur texture because I'm lazy as shit. Also, the Ghostline app makes it easy to print the stencils bigger than the size of paper. Is he paid um, to say that? I have like 10 different stencil tricks I do. It's probably easier for me to show you in a video, um, but definitely better for artistic development to keep the stencil as simple and minimal as possible. The inkjet printer will slowly print more faded over time. You have to go in the settings and do a deep clean if you want to print dark again. See that last part with the inkjet printer. I didn't know that there's a little setting to clean your actual printer heads. Surprisingly, I actually, but perhaps unsurprisingly, I didn't at all thought of that. I'm going to do that right after this video anyway um i have 10 different stencil tricks well adam show us then now i don't need it when you're done let us know and i'll put it in the bio fanboy slayer 338 says did the same thing with my epson printer kept smearing and came to find a year later i used a cheap stencil ink and now they have a strictly black printer from will cost me another 600 and they say you have to print every off of it to prevent drying up or clogging guys i'm gonna need you to write bats i can't read this first of all already i can barely read yeah i'm not printing off every day to prevent it from clogging i'd rather keep doing hand stencils if that's the case but that was my experience to be honest fanboy slayer um it works okay is there a difference between eco stencil and inkjet yeah the sure is apparently the inkjet's better for now i had eco stencil and for the liney stencil or for the digital hand stencil it was more than enough but the second i'm trying to print a realistic stencil it all smears so i watched another review and they said it was the same so i thought cool it's double the fucking price so i didn't buy it obviously i immediately got punished like always anytime i get cute and try to save a bit of money i get my fucking teeth kicked in so i'm gonna buy the better one and we'll see however though there was someone that said uh hold on Paula mike said you should look into gentian violet is the same exact thing as the stencil liquid 99 percent cheaper so i did have a look and it is 99 percent cheaper but i don't know if it's the same and please let us know if you actually use that in the printer if you can please comment julio says i think it's important to cover the fact that images need to be flipped sometimes before applying to achieve the expected result simple but effective for beginners i'm not sure what the level of people watching this channel is if you're an absolute beginner of course and that needs to be said you have to flip the stencil when you print it so then when you transfer it on the actual body part it will be then flipped again and you have the expected result so i think julio might be right if there's any beginners 
and don't understand how it works, this is how it works. I don't know what the level of um, artists are that are watching this. So please let us know whether you're an absolute beginner, intermediate, professional, whatever. Let me know in the comments because then I can probably tailor the content better. And here's a funny story as well. What happened to me one time? That's not even too long ago, a year or so ago. So basically that actually happened to me with the hand stance with tattoo. I finished it and then I figured I flipped it the wrong way when I printed it out, but it turned out to actually be better. Now, I'm not sure if my brain started to manufacture excuses like, oh, actually it's better and it really wasn't, but I could have easily um, scanned it and then put it through the machine and I would have a mirrored version. It actually turned out to be better the other way around. That's probably a useful tip as well. When you're in the design stage, it's always good to mirror the image back and forth to sort of detect inefficiencies and imperfections and issues with your composition quicker so when you're working on a painting or a design for a long time your eyes kind of get used to them so you know the expression when people say go rest your eyes a bit and come back with fresh eyes that's because you get used to it and your brain automatically starts making excuses for you but i do recommend keep mirroring and flipping the design back and forth and up and down whilst you're designing and certainly for paintings you know hold it up to the mirror flip it on its head take a picture zoom out zoom in and mirror it in the app and this way you will see inefficiencies in composition and proportions and perspective quite quickly as opposed to resting your eyes and then coming back with fresh eyes that's just a little hack of how to um not having to rest your eyes and then you can end up in the hospital like i have anyway which one do you recommend stenciling on ipad with pencil or using photoshop i hope you get what i'm trying to ask so jack i think what you're trying to ask is whether hand stenciling digitally or generating the stencil digitally and then printing off a stencil that you haven't drawn i suppose i think um depends what your goal is and depends what tattoo you're doing and depends where you are in your phase of development so if you're a beginner again certainly i'll always recommend to hand stencil whether it's actual hand stencils or digitally obviously only for certain things so realism and things like that if it's just script or some lettering or a super precise mandala or some shit you should definitely digitally generate that stencil because it's just going to be computer perfect so you're just not going to be able to compete with if you're a beginner and you're doing that kind of work if that's the case you should still hand stencil in your time off or whatever and tattoo these stencils on fake skin so i'm not you know you shouldn't just jump over that process and just start digitally generating stencils and certainly not realism stencils now if you're a professional if you're the big g you can obviously do whatever you want who am i to tell you what to do uh if you're a beginner you're fucking you're my child so i will tell you what to do which stance application product do you find works best for staying power respect for your no bullshit tower as it is vids keep up the great work man i'll be honest i just heard keep up the great work just kidding anyway i prefer stencil stuff just because it's stickier i've got electrum as well in the shop i think electrum holds better or longer it's not as sticky so i kind of struggle putting the stencil on with it stencil stuff i find you know it's stickier it works better for me i don't know um but i had this spray hold on i'm not sure if the camera's picking that up properly stencil plus so i've only used it twice though but i also like it because it's super sticky they haven't paid me or anything that's not an actual endorsement it's an aluminium bottle so it's quite luxury i quite like that so that's mostly that's mainly why i like it anyway which kind of thermal printer do you use for stencils i don't use thermal printers because i'm not insane so i use an actual printer with stencil ink in it or a hand stencil yeah if you're going to use a thermal printer just buy a cheap one who cares they're all the same bullshit i suppose the brother ones are better but i hear people just have problems with them really sheath knocker stencils on knees and wide lettering quotes on curved areas like ribs and thighs i'm not sure exactly what you're trying to ask me here so you're gonna have to be a little bit more specific if you're asking purely about stencil application let's say for example for the knee you're gonna have to cut into the stencil quite a bit to make it fit around the area you're actually applying the stencil on freehand would be ideal if it's something you're capable of freehanding but if you're not you're also probably not qualified just yet to actually tattoo knees knees are quite tricky 
tricky the skin's quite tricky but i will say this as well when you're applying the stencil try to apply the stencil when the client is in like a neutral position so let's say if it's on the ribs you're not gonna put the stencil on when it's all stretched like that or when his arms are fully down right so you're gonna try to find some sort of neutral position and then you're gonna apply the stencil now for lettering on curved areas or wrapping around ribs and thighs or whatever you said you're gonna have to cut the stencil into pieces or put it in photoshop and warp it in photoshop already and then apply each individual word now that's not gonna be perfect obviously freehand will always be ideal so if you're gonna specialize in lettering tattoos man up grab a pen grab a paper practice learn how to freehand stuff take some courses grow up and if you're talking about just commercial little you know fashion accessories i don't know what to tell you but yeah cut the stencil up you know piece it together you'll figure it out ink by hero best way to make large scale stencils may be 11 times 11 times 17 or larger or leg sleeves full chairs the back i assume just print and tape together uh yeah i think so so even for hand stencil what i used to do is just print it out fully tape it together measure it when i have the measurement down then i'm gonna start stenciling so now digitally probably if i prepare the whole thing digitally whether it's by hand or digitally generated print it out in pieces and tape it together I don't see another way unless you have a huge printer. Now, the other thing you can do is um, use a projector, but a projector can only work for rather simple designs, right? So a huge tiger face, a huge scowl, anything like that. Uh, the second you introduce a bit more detail or more things going on in the actual piece, you're gonna start running into some significant problems, especially if you have to align it next time when he comes back in, half stand, whatever it's, you know, I wouldn't recommend projecting at all. Chris Sajik. Let me know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, Chris. How much do I have to give you to take down that Bill Gates picture? It's not a picture, it's a painting. And that painting was not painted to glorify Bill Gates in all his glory and his, you know, kind heart or whatever. He's obviously Chief Satan. Um, so he's also painted like a rat he's got that sneaky smile on but i will make a gofundme and if you guys collect a hundred thousand pounds i'll burn it live on youtube that was all the questions from you guys thank you so much for everybody that shared the insights again i certainly learned a lot there's quite a few things i didn't even consider for example cleaning the printer heads so i'm super grateful for everybody that chimed in let me know if you like this kind of format of the video maybe we'll start a conversation and then talk in the comments and then make a follow-up video like that i'm going to respond to more comments next week but these are going to be from the more juicy variety about the tattoo thoughts when people attack me on instagram thank you so much for watching degenerates keep pressing charges stay toxic and i'll see you in the next one